When I look through the comments on my Surface Duo 2 announcement coverage, there is one comment that keeps coming up over and over and over. And while I totally understand this comment, I get it. I do feel like it needs a little bit of clarification to be done around the subject matter. And this comment is basically something like this. The software on Surface Duo after one year is still really bad. Android 11 is still nowhere to be found. Because of that, I don't trust Microsoft with my money to do it right a second time. Like I said, I get that. Why would you buy a device for $1,400, watch it receive really no substantial software updates? Yeah, it got a little bit better, but many bugs still persist. No update to Android 11, even though that was supposed to have happened months ago. And then think, yeah, the sequel is going to have much better software support. Why would you rationally think that? Future Shane has to step in here real quick because in between recording this video and this video going live, we got a pretty big update here. This is coming from The Verge. Microsoft says the original Surface Duo will get Android 11 by the end of the year. Their quote here was, we remain committed to providing updates to Surface Duo and we're working to bring Android 11 to existing customers before the end of this year. So let's say Android 11 comes out tomorrow. I genuinely do not think that has much bearing or changes really anything I'm going to say in the rest of this video. We're still talking about a device that will have been out for over a year before Android 11 has been delivered. And when I talk about Surface Duo being left behind in order to focus on Surface Duo 2 in this video, just because Android 11 did eventually come, I don't think that in any way, shape, or form changes what I'm saying. Well, in order to explain that, why you might be optimistic about Duo 2's software when compared to the original Surface Duo, we need to do a little bit of history here. And luckily, there's an article on Windows Central called Project Andromeda, The Secret History of Surface Duo. And it is a wonderful article that I've referenced on a couple of occasions. And in that article, it talks about how long this dual screen device was in development, how long it was being worked on at Microsoft, because this wasn't some recent idea. This concept had been worked on for a long time. So reading from the article here, this is shortly after Andromeda OS has been canceled and that team has largely been moved to Windows 10X. We all know what happened to Windows 10X. Run of bad luck for these uh, fine developers. But here we are. We have Surface Duo. It was running the precursor to Windows 10X, perhaps you could call it, called Andromeda OS. Andromeda OS is now canceled. Now you have an orphaned piece of hardware that they love. Panos Panay and the Surface team loves the hardware. It's got no operating system. Let's read from here. While Andromeda OS was no longer happening, the Surface team still had the hardware ready to go and they wanted to ship it. At some point in late 2018 or early 2019, the decision was made to turn Andromeda into an Android device. This was kept very quiet as most people who worked on the Windows version had no idea this decision had been made. So a small team of people decided to repurpose what was then called Project Andromeda. I know that's confusing because there was Andromeda OS and then Project Andromeda, which was Duo. They repurposed it to run Android. So let's look at this timeline here. Late 2018, early 2019, they move it to Android. October 2019 is where they unveiled the thing. So we're talking about less than a year's time spent on Android before this thing was unveiled. And let's keep in mind, reading further, when Microsoft did move to Android, it didn't immediately have a team on hand that could jump in and begin working on the Android OS enhancements and customizations it needed to bring this form factor to life. So it contracted third-party vendors such as Movial to do that initial groundwork. Many of those third-party vendor employees are now full-time at Microsoft. Microsoft did not have an Android team to do this work. They literally subcontracted it. So after less than a year of outsourced work, they show off Surface Duo. And then about a year after that, September of 2020, they released the thing. As mentioned in this article as well, when it was ported to Android, it was not going well. This thing was crashing constantly. Most of this hardware was intended to run Windows, and now it's running Android. This isn't all Android hardware. 
the touch digitizer, the pen, all these things are not for Android. They were extremely unstable. So we have a subcontracted team working on porting this unstable Windows hardware over to Android. I get the system on a chip was Android, but it's not that simple. There's a lot of Windows stuff going on there too in the deeper layers, so to speak. This wasn't a simple job. The Surface Duo is now a phone when it used to be a mobile PC. When you ask yourself, why didn't Surface Duo have NFC? Why didn't it have a proper camera? Why doesn't this thing have common phone features? Well, that's your answer. It wasn't a phone. However, Microsoft knew when they made it an Android device, it's a phone now. That changed the entire vision of this device. Yes, they had the hardware, but the vision was now radically changed and they knew that it needed to be a phone. So before Surface Duo was even launched, they were iterating and working on what would become Surface Duo 2. And it is my understanding and my belief based on the people I have spoken to, the Microsoft knew that Surface Duo was not going to be a phenomenal product. They knew that the concept would be strong, but they knew that the execution based on the framework that they had built, based on the fact that they didn't have an Android team on hand until well into development, based on the fact that it was lacking common phone features while being a phone, they knew that Surface Duo 2 was going to be the one to truly make a mark. It was because of that that I firmly believe that their attention shifted very, very early on from Surface Duo to Surface Duo 2. We now know from some documentation here, for instance, that Surface Duo 2's approach to phone mode is radically different than on Surface Duo. As you know, on Surface Duo, when you are in book mode and you want to switch to phone mode, depending on what screen the, the gyroscope, the accelerometer detects, being the one that's moving, it will try and guess which screen is the main screen. On Surface Duo 2, it assumes the right screen is going to be your phone mode screen unless you tell it otherwise. It's ignoring the accelerometer to some degree. At least that's what early documentation is telling us. That is something that could have been pushed out to Surface Duo and could have solved one of the big problems for Surface Duo. The fact that the thing's constantly flippy flopping around when you're going into phone mode. They could have pushed that over to Surface Duo. Why didn't they? Because they're not really concerned with Surface Duo. They're concerned with Surface Duo 2. When you're trying to use the camera in Surface Duo and you're trying to change selfie or just you're just looking around and it keeps switching between selfie and a normal world facing photograph. None of that stuff works very well. Well, why hasn't it really been improved? Perhaps it's because Surface Duo 2 has a camera on the backside and that's not going to be a problem with Surface Duo 2 anymore. So there was no need to address it at this point. Yes, Duo had that problem and Duo was on the market, but it didn't sell very well and they'd already solved it for the next version. Now, this is all a big double-edged sword here because the lack of confidence that's been created by Surface Duo 1 might cause people to not buy Surface Duo 2. But as far as I can see, there are only two options here. Option number one is what I'm laying out for you here. They pushed Surface Duo out because they needed to save the hardware or they wanted to save the hardware. It ran Android. It wasn't ready. The hardware wasn't ready for the software, vice versa. They knew it had problems, but they weren't really concerned about Duo 1 because they knew that Duo 2 would be the one that would fulfill the vision in a much more complete way. So they pushed it out the door and they moved on to Duo 2, largely ignoring the original Surface Duo, putting most of their effort into getting things right on Duo 2. That's what I'm laying out here for you. Option number two is that the biggest software company on the face of the earth has no idea what they're doing with Android whatsoever. And Surface Duo 2 should then launch in just as bad a state as the original Surface Duo, or at least in a comparably bad state, which is hard for me to believe. Is it possible? Sure, absolutely. But I think that the first scenario is more believable and is more likely, and it more lines up with what I've been told from people who know. And that better be the truth. Because so many people are saying to me, I'll just wait till Duo 2 is $600 and I'll buy it then. If Duo 2 is $600 after six months, then the second version of the possible ways things went must have been true. And that's an absolute failure and an absolute disaster. And this is sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy because if the early reports of Surface Duo don't indicate that the software is where, we, where it needs to be, that it isn't good enough to convince the people I'm talking about, to jump back in and give it another shot, 
If it can't convince these people and the thing doesn't sell, well, guess what? It's going to be a failure anyways. So I present all this information to you as my way of saying, wait until early October when people start telling you how the software actually is. And if suddenly reports start coming out that Surface Duo 2 software is wildly improved, perhaps what I'm telling you here is correct. I don't mean to tell you this as a way to make you feel better about your Surface Duo because honestly, it shouldn't make you feel better about it. It should make you feel worse about it. It should tell you that it's been to some degree abandoned because they knew Duo 2 was going to be better anyways. It's not a good feeling and it doesn't promote the desire to buy the sequel, I would imagine, for a lot of you. And I, I, you're totally justified in feeling that way. But as far as I can see, there's just two options. Let me know which one you think it is in the comments down below. Stay tuned for more coverage like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.